fly down to Houston all the time to play in the Champions Club live stream because I absolutely love the high stakes action. Well, today is no exception. In fact, I think it's the most exciting session here I've ever played. You're not gonna wanna miss the $32,000 pot I play with pocket queens and the even crazier finish to the hand that no one was expecting. I take my seat at the table and right away jump in with ace queen offsuit from the plus one position and I make it $150 to go. Joker Jerry decides to call from the hijack and we're also going to pick up one other customer going three ways to the flop which gives us two pair on an ace king queen board all different suits. In between two opponents I usually start with a check also given the fact that the opponents are more likely to have jack 10 than myself I start with that check and the turn comes the 10 of diamonds. AC checks it over to me for a second time and given the fact there is a four liner to Broadway and I don't have a jack in my hand, I check it once again. Joker Jerry fires out for $130 and I put in the call. We lose our three way and the river comes the seven of hearts. Still continuing the story of a check here. Don't really think I'm gonna get value from much worse. Rainbow board, but any jack is good. But if I check it over to him, he could bluff. He fires out again small and I put in the call. When his cards are exposed, we see he has pocket pieces. So a flat call pre-flop got him, I guess the minimum here because I definitely would have called a raise. He flops top set versus my two pair and he's taken down that $1,000 pot. Hand number 15 is definitely in contention for hand of the night. Well, it starts off pretty crazy with the 100, 200, and 400 dollar straddles on. And I look down from the big blind with a premium ace king of clubs. What a dream spot. Gotta go large here. I go around three and a half X, the $400 straddle. That means it's a $1,400 open from old Wolfgang here in the big blind. The action folds around to that $400 straddle. Mr. J, who puts in the call for $1,000 more. Just like that, we're going heads up out of position to a flop in a $3,200 pot. The flop's interesting, it comes queen, jack, eight. I think he's more likely to have nine, 10 suited and offsuit. However, I'm still gonna have queen, jack suited, pocket queens, pocket jacks. He really shouldn't have those sets. I decide to go for a $1,000 down bet and Mr. J puts in the call. The turn is great for me, it comes the five of clubs. Obviously, I would have loved to pick up an ace, king, or a 10, but the five of club gives me way more outs if I'm behind. I have 15 outs to make a good hand, and there's 5,160 in the middle. I look at my stack, I count it out, I have 6,600 approximately, so I think the only sizing here is to go for the all-in shove. All in from Wolfgang for 6580. The logic is if I have any bluffs like ace three of diamonds, maybe king 10, ace king, I definitely wanna go large and try to get him to fold one pair. If I have a very strong hand like pocket queens, pocket jacks, queen jack, I also wanna protect it against all of those draws and going large definitely accomplishes that. So I shove it all in, 65, 60 in the middle and Mr. J has me covered. He's in the tank for a while and we see that he has king jack of spades. So second pair here and he really doesn't want to fold. You can also hear him say out loud, he's putting me on a hand like ace king suited and that's definitely not what I wanna hear as well. Really would love to see a fold, but if he does call, we're gonna win this one out of every three times. Really love my shove in this spot, but at the end of the day, Mr. J makes an insane call. There's a reason why he's getting invited out to this game. He sniffs out the bluff, puts in the call. He's not afraid to play massive pots, and just like that, we are playing an $18,000 pot straight out of the gate here. Ace King suited versus King Jack suited. Let's run it one time. The river card is not good for me. It comes the seven of spades. So just like that, my ace high bluff goes down in flames. 18K getting shipped over to Mr. J. And we go into the bag and pull out $10,000, enough for bullet number two. All right, we're feeling a little bit demoralized. It's hard for me to win on this Champions Club live stream. In 2023, I ended up losing around $50,000 on this stream. 2024 has gone a little bit better. I think I'm up 10K on the stream, but still, not really my home turf here in Houston, I gotta get back to work. I raise up queen 10 offsuit from the cutoff over the $100 straddle. Joker Jerry finds the fold and Callie comes in for a three bet to $800. I'm not going anywhere against Callie, he's a fun player and uh, we are going heads up in position to a flop. 
flop's not too great for me and I decide to start with a check when Callie checks it over to myself. The eight of clubs peels off on the turn, gives me a few more outs to the nine. Callie checks it over to myself once again and the action goes check, check, giving me the nuts on the river, the nine of diamonds, bang, we river the straight. There's $1,700 in the middle and Callie now shoves all in for $5,700. I check my cards one more time to just make sure I have the nuts. What is he shoving all in with? I snap call after confirming I do have queen 10 and he shows queen 10. I immediately turn over my cards, but that means I missed an amazing opportunity to go for the slow roll for the chop. I could have pretended like he had the best hand because most of the time he will against my two pair or sets. Still, uh, I turn over to the goods and we're gonna chop up a 13K pot. Before we jump into the next hand, I wanted to bring something alarming to your attention. 83.5% of you guys are not subscribed. What are you doing? It's free to subscribe. I'm playing 30K pots here down in Houston, trying to bluff off my stack with Ace King suited. If you guys can do me one favor in this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now let's jump into the next one. Right in this next hand, hand number 40, we see a raise from Han from the plus two, a bunch of callers over to AC, a very good player from Spain who now resides in Austin, Texas. He decides to come in for what looks like a squeeze all the way up to $700, and most likely I'm just gonna be folding here out of the $50 straddle, but look at that, we pick up the ladies from the straddle, and of course, now I have to come in for a four bet. Four bets are very strong, especially when there's a ton of players out there already interested in the hand, so I don't need to go super large. I decided to make it 1750 to go. Callie goes for the old call the 125. Now let's rip it all in for $6,100 play and uh, AC gets out of there with his pocket nueves. Of course, I'm snap calling Callie here with the ladies. Not really a strong line when he calls and then shoves. Like why wouldn't he just raise in the first place if he had a good hand? So when I put in the call, we see we are up against a six of hearts, but in the moment we are not turning the cards over. So I have no idea what he has. A jack 10 deuce board with two hearts seems pretty good for queens, but not when he has the nut flush draw and now it's basically a coin flip. The turn comes the three of diamonds and for a second we debate running the river two times, but after they have to call the floor over and all this stuff, it seems like it was gonna take way too much time. So I say, nope, we're running it one time. In the moment, I don't know that I need to fade 11 outs. I feel like I'm much better than that, but luckily the river card is a brick and this 14K pot is getting shipped over to yours truly. Just like that, we are climbing back in this one up to 16K in our stack, now only stuck around 3,700 on the session. I find myself in the cutoff with pocket tens and raise it up to $300. Trick time is on the button and comes in for a three bet, which is pretty standard so far. What's not standard is the cold four bet from Cali. He's gonna make it $2,900 to go, it's a shove. Back over to me, pocket tens are a very vulnerable hand. We already have a three bet on the button from trick time and now we have a cold four bet shove from Cali in the straddle. I begrudgingly get rid of my pocket tens. I don't think against a four bet and a three bet. We're gonna be up against hands that we have a big edge in. So I reluctantly let it go, but we can see here it was a bad fold because 10 nine of hearts three bet us and the four bet was jack nine offsuit. So we would have been in a commanding lead there. And sure enough, when the board runs out, we would have taken down the $6,300 pot, but it would have been a lot more with trick time in the hand as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the hand of the night. Make sure if you haven't liked the video already to do so really quickly and now let's jump into it. Hand number 58 is a beauty. Pocket queens now from the straddle. Once again, I decide to go large here and we are going to pick up a bunch of callers for $400. We're off to a flop five ways which comes queen, jack, deuce, bang, we flop top set. Top set for Wolfgang. $2,000 in the middle and tons of stuff that people are gonna connect with. They could have some Jack X holdings. They could have some straight draws like King 10, Ace King 10, nine, and some backdoor flush draws like Ace five of diamonds, Ace five of spades, all of that good stuff. That all means that I'm starting with a check here when I flop top set. The action checks over to Mr. J in the cutoff who fires out for $600 and Poker Otis puts in the call as well. And now I have a decision. Do I go for the check raise of like 2,500 to 3K or do I just check call and hope that they improve and decide to do some interesting stuff on the turn? That's what I elect to do. I go for the call and we are going three ways to the turn, which comes a brick. It's the six of hearts. Hoping someone like Poker Otis picked up pocket sixes and now has a set. 
I decided to lead out now into this $3,800 pot, and the logic is I think it's gonna get checked through a lot. Usually when someone fires multi-way like Mr. J, they have a strong hand. However, when they pick up a bunch of callers, I've noticed that they slow down and check on a lot of turns, and I definitely don't want it to check through on the turn. Wolfgang deciding to lead into the pack. It's unlikely that Poker Otis has a super strong hand given the fact he just called the flop bet instead of raising. So all that leads me to believe that I need to fire out here, get some value, and if one of them has a set, they're probably just gonna raise me anyways. The sizing I like to go for is $1,500, and Mr. J puts in the call with three Barneys, three purple chips there, and Poker Otis out of the way there with his gutter. King nine offsuit called a bet, and surely there was no way he was gonna fire out on that turn. River card comes a deuce of diamonds, which seems like a brick. Hopefully Mr. J has pocket jacks or pocket sixes. If he does have some bluffs though, I think they're just gonna fold if I bet out here. So I decide to slow down and check and allow him to bet with all of his really good hands that don't wanna check through. And also bluff with a lot of hands like straight draws and a busted backdoor flush draws. Wolfgang checking. I check it over to Mr. J and there's 6,800 in the middle and he nearly pots it Three barrels of black, $6,000, what a massive bet. And all I can hear in my head is that funny sound effect that my editor Lucas uses in the shorts. Ah! We're thinking of Vegas and the Mirage, how much money can we get? Well, I have 12.4K in my stack and the plan was to check shove. So after a little bit of Hollywooding, after all, I did go to Pepperdine and lived in California for eight years. I'm pretty good at that and I check shove my stack into the middle. Now he has a decision. Oh wait, he snap calls me. Snap calls me, what does he have? King deuce offsuit. What a miracle river card. He hits, trips on the river, can't get away from it. And my interesting way of playing pocket queens wins me the maximum $17,000 of profit in this hand alone, a 32K pot, which if I'm relaying it to you correctly is the biggest pot I've played here at Champions. And it's pretty great that I'm taking it down Coming over my way, hand number 58, it was a beauty and definitely a much needed pot for our chip stack. Remember, we're in for $20,000 because we're in for two 10K bullets. And now just like that, we're up to 32K, comfortably in Profitsville, up 11.830, and I'm loving life. Right, hand number 71. I look down at ace queen offsuit from the cutoff. Mr. J raises the plus one to $300. And normally I go for a three bet, but against early position raises, I usually start with a call. That's no different here. I put in the call. We're gonna pick up two more players, Joker Jerry and Callie. This is the desired four way I wanna be in. What do you mean by that? Against three other fun players, I'm in position, ace queen offsuit, but of course the flop is no good for us and the action checks through. On the king of clubs turn, the action checks over to me once again, and I look pretty upset that I have to divert my attention away from my grilled salmon Caesar salad, along with my cheesecake and my mango Moscow mule. If you guys haven't been at Champions, this place makes the best food I've ever had in a poker room. But yeah, for a second, we gotta take our attention away from that delightful situation and uh, decide to check back on this turn. I thought I could get a pair to fold, but instead I check behind and the river card comes aboard pairing king of diamonds. Mr. J now fires out for $100 and this looks pretty weak. So instead of just calling, I think raising is a better play. For instance, if he has a hand like pocket sevens, pocket tens, I think those would bet out here for value, but also would fold to a raise. Given the fact there are two kings out there, a jack out there, all of that good stuff. If he had a much better hand like a king, or maybe a hand like ace jack, I think he would go much larger. So I raise him up to $1,100 and it turns out no one had anything. He bluffed there with five high. We're taking down hand number 71. The $100 straddle has been put out by myself and Trick Time puts out the 200. Mr. J in the small blind puts in the call for 190 more. I complete for 100 bucks and Trick Time with his six deuce offsuit decides to be nice, let us live, and checks behind. The flop comes monotone or monochrome. I know some of you guys are saying that down in the comments. Either way, it's 1097 all diamonds and Mr. J checks it over to myself. I do have the gutter to the straight flush and eight of diamonds would be pretty nice. But given the fact I just have six high, the action checks through over to chick time who checks behind bringing in the three of hearts on the turn. That now gives me a double gutter. So when Jay checks it over to myself once again, I'm thinking I could go for a bet here, but there's only 675 in the middle. I have six high. People are gonna call me with one diamonds, even one pair, like 
9.8, 9.6. So I don't think I'm getting much to fold. And the action checks through once again, giving me the straight on the river. It's not gonna be a bang because there's three diamonds out there, but the four of hearts is definitely a welcome sight. I now decide to go for a bet and everyone believes me folding their cards, but hand number 88, I pick up pocket jacks in the cutoff and raise it up to $200. We're gonna get two customers, Trick Time and Callie going three ways to the flop. We flop ourselves an over pair on a 10 6 5 board rainbow. Callie's a fun player and leads out into the field. Of course, I'm gonna be calling. Raising makes some sense as well. He could be doing this with hands like seven, eight of spades, clubs, or hearts. Still, with trick time behind me, he easily could have a set of sixes or fives. I wanna see what he does. He decides just a smooth call, which uh, is alarming because he's still in the hand, but also not too scary because I think he would raise a lot of his two pair and sets. Still, when the turn comes, the deuce of diamonds and Cali continues betting. This time it's $1,300 to go. I really would love to raise, but still with trick time behind me, I'm gonna play it a little bit more cautiously and just complete and call for 1300. Trick time is going nowhere once again, so we still have ourselves a three-way here in Houston. $5,700 in the middle, and the river comes the ace of hearts. Not exactly the best card, because hands like ace three and ace four have me beat. There also could be some ace high flush draws, and I'll get there as well. Cali slows down and checks. Really a decision point here if I think I can get value from a 10, or if I'm just value owning myself against an ace. When you really break it down, there's not too many aces that get there on the river. Let's just think about a few options. Like for instance, if trick time called the flop with ace nine of spades or ace eight of clubs, he's definitely folding the turn for $1,300. So I don't really think he has many aces in his range. And then Cali, is he really just slowing down and checking on the river with an ace? I doubt it. So I think this is a pretty nitty check for me here with Jax. I just wanted to get to showdown in a $6,000 pot but I think if I would have uh, deliberated for another 30 to 45 seconds, I would have deduced that uh, we could have gone for a value bet against a 10. Sure enough, trick time checks behind with queen, 10 offsuit, and Cali had 10-3 suited. I think one of them would have called a $2,000 bet, so I missed some value there, but taking down a $6,000 pot, definitely not the worst news in the world. With that last hand in the books, we finish with a chip stack of $33,550. I V-pipped around 24%, which could have been a little bit higher, but at least it wasn't any lower. At the end of the stream, we ended up booking a 13.5K profit, but the night went on and we played a little bit post-stream as well. A few interesting things happened post-stream. Ended up winning a $25 food comp from the generous people here at Champions. Ended up taking down a $4,000 river bet with eight Ace King on a double ace board and ended up booking a $9,400 profit in around two hours of play post stream. That brings my total plus minus up to $22,590 in the green. I played around seven hours and 15 minutes, which means I netted $3,100 an hour. Pretty insane. I'm finally climbing out of the hole, which was 2023 here at Champions. Had some great food tonight, played a $32,000 pot, ended up booking a win post stream as well, and really appreciate all of your guys' support. If you guys like this video, you'll love a few of the other ones that are on your screen right now. Click one of those to continue watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!